in this video. I've got three ways that you can darken your watercolors. And don't worry if you're working in other mediums, these tips work for any medium. So we're going to start with the method of darkening watercolors that is most often spoken about, and that is to use color opposites. But before we do that, we're going to have a little look at some very simple color theory, because it's important that you understand not only why this works, but how it can go wrong. So I've written down here, three color opposites. There are only three. They're sometimes called complementary colors. So we have red and green, yellow and purple, blue and orange. So what do you notice about these colors? Well, these three here are the primaries and these are the secondaries. Now, if you have a background in science, you may know green as a primary color. Although that's correct when it comes to scientific process and to light levels, as artists, we have to consider green to be a secondary color because we can't extract the blue and yellow from it separately as we could if we were looking at light. Now within each of these sets, we have something interesting going on because within each of these sets are contained all three primary colors. So let me explain to you what I mean. And the fact that I've written red on this side and green on this side, it could be the other way around. It doesn't matter which way round they are, but we have here red. So what makes green? We have yellow and blue. So with our yellow, blue and red, we have the three primaries and it continues. So here is yellow and its opposite is purple. Purple is made from red and blue. So again, we have one, two, three primaries. Here we have blue. Its opposite is orange, which is red and yellow. So within each of these sets, we have all three of the primary colors. Now, what happens if you mix all three primary colors together? You get a muted color. In other words, you get a brown or you get a gray. What decides whether you get brown or gray when you mix all three primary colors together? The answer is in the blue pigment because blue is the only one of these primaries that's cool. So if I mix all three of these primaries together and the pigment is majority blue, I'm going to get a gray. But if I mix all three of these primaries together and the majority of the pigment is yellow or red or a combination of those, then I'm going to get a brown. So what this means is that when you add your opposite color to your main color, if you continue to add and add and add, you're going to push that color into a neutral. So when you add an opposite color to a color, it doesn't just darken it, it also neutralizes it. So you're changing it somewhat. Now this is important because if you push it too far, you will end up with brown or gray. It's also important which one of the colors you choose. For instance, it's important whether you choose ultramarine or whether you choose phthalo blue. Now you don't have to worry too much about those differences. I advise you just to swatch before you do this. So if you need to add an opposite color in, just do some swatching and try some different colors out and see which one is gonna work best for your particular painting. So let's swatch some color opposites and see how it works. So I'm going to swatch some orange and we'll imagine that we were actually painting an orange by which I mean the fruit orange. So let's put some orange paint down. I don't know what this paper is, by the way. I just, I found a sample pack and I just grabbed it. Um, it may even be a mixed media paper, but um, it won't make any difference for this video. So I may as well use it up. So here I've got some, um, I'm going to use some cobalt blue and let's add a bit of the opposite in. Now you have to do this gradually a little at a time, particularly if you're using a staining color because it's easy to go too far with this. So here we can see I'm darkening this color. It's also gone rather greenish gray. So this would be okay for a shadow on an orange, but I would have to be careful, particularly if I use something that was already slightly greenish, like a phthalo blue, it would be easy to push this into green and you don't necessarily want greenish brown patches on your orange. So let's do it again and go a bit stronger and let's push it too far this time to see what happens when it goes wrong. So I've got my orange here and let's put lots of the blue in. It's gone darker, but it's gone rather brownish. Let's put some more in. We're actually now going to start pushing it towards gray. So I want you to understand that although adding a color opposite in will darken your color, it will also make it muted in other words, it will neutralize it. It will push it towards a neutral. So although it's a great method of darkening colors, you do need to swatch it first to see what's going to happen. And there are a couple of other ways to darken if this isn't working for you. We're going to look at those next. 
If you are enjoying this video, can I ask you to do me a quick favor? Can you please click that like button, that thumbs up button? If you like, share, subscribe, or leave me a comment here on YouTube, all of these things are free. It will help my channel to grow and I can teach more people like you how to paint and draw. So the next method of darkening watercolors is the simplest and it's also the one that's most suited to deeper, stronger colors, particularly the staining colors. So if, for example, I get a little bit of this blue violet here, so I'm just gonna get a touch of this. And you see that with a lot of water, it's really quite light. Now the answer to getting a darker color here is simply to use a lot more paint. This will be easier if you have tube paints, but it's not impossible if you have pan paints and you can see that simply by using more pigment, possibly a bit less water, we can get our color really, really dark. As I said, this works best for very strong colors. I'm gonna show you another method now that works better for lighter colors. So let's look at a color now which is naturally not very dark. So I've got some cerulean blue here and I could sort of scrub at this all day long. I'm never gonna get a really strong dark color because it simply isn't a strong dark pigment. So here's my cerulean blue. So how can I get this darker? What I can do is actually to cheat. So I'm going to put some in the pan here and I'm actually going to add a color that's very similar but much stronger and this is the phthalo blue that I've got here. So it's a blue that leans towards the greenish end of the color spectrum. So it's not dissimilar to cerulean. And what's going to happen is we're going to bump it up so we're going to get the best of both worlds. So I'm still going to get the granulation of the cerulean but I've bumped it up now with this staining color which means if I was doing a sky for example I can get a much stronger blue but it's still a very similar looking blue. So although this is a good option for the blues for where we have a, for example several staining blues and we can probably find one that we like and that will go into our light blue nicely. This is not the case for all colors. For instance, the yellows are particularly difficult. If you have something like a lemon yellow, one of the cool yellows, and you want to make it much stronger and darker, your only option really is to add something like an Indian yellow, and that's going to make it a significantly warmer yellow. Now that may not matter. It may be just what you need for that particular painting. So this third option, just like our first option, is not only going to darken the color, it's also going to change it. And these are the options that we have when we're working with natural pigments, but that's what makes watercolor painting so challenging and so much fun. Thank you so much for watching this three essential tips video. Before you leave this video, don't forget to have a look in the video description. I've got lots of free stuff down there for you. I've got free downloadable PDFs with art tips on. I've even got a free watercolor painting mini course that you can take. Don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this one. And you can watch another one of my videos right now.